So then we have our polls output to the screen right here and it's looking quite nice. Now I'd like to attach some functionality to these so that if we click on an option, for example, Python right here, then the vote of Python goes up by one. Or if I click on JavaScript, that goes up by one. So we need to attach click events to these answers right here. And those answers are in the poll details. And we have a div for each answer. So that's what we're ultimately attaching the click events to. So if the user clicks this, then we want to increase the vote of answer A by one. If the user clicks on this one, we want to increase the vote of answer B by one. So the data is all inside the app component at the minute over here, right? So ultimately we need to emit a custom event to this component right here so we can edit the data here because if we have a poll stored in here with a certain amount of votes, we need to first of all find out which poll that is. So that data needs to go up, the ID of the poll we want to change, and also the vote that we want to up, either A or B, depending on what they click. So let's start this by going to poll details and let's add a click event to each one of these answers. So on click and then set that equal to something. We'll come back to this in a minute. On click again and set that equal to something. So what I'm going to do is an inline function, first of all, because I need to pass data to another function, which I'm going to call now. And that data is going to be the option right here, which is actually going to be A in this case and B in this case. So that's the first bit of data I need to pass. And secondly, the ID of the poll that they've clicked on, right? So let's now invoke a function called handle vote right here. And we're passing in those two pieces of information. The first one is going to be A. That's the vote we want to increase. And secondly, poll.id, the ID of the vote that we want to change. So let's do exactly the same down here. So I'll paste that in. This time it's B and poll ID. So now let's create this function right here, handle vote. So under here, I'll say handling votes and we'll say const handle vote is equal to an arrow function. And inside this function, we need to take as parameters the option, first of all, which is A or B these things right here, and also the ID of the poll we want to update, and that is ID. So now we need to dispatch a custom event because we're sending along information with that event to the app component right here. So first of all, we need to import the create event dispatcher. So let me do that right at the top. Import create event dispatcher, and this is from Svelte, like so and then we can create that dispatch function. So let me say down here, const dispatch is equal to create event dispatcher and invoke that. Okay, so we now have access to this dispatch function and down here we can dispatch an event. So dispatch, and then we need to give this event a name. I'm gonna call it vote since that's what they're doing, voting. And then we need to pass through an object as data. Now we have two things we want to pass here. So we can just pass them in as separate properties inside an object that we create here. So we want an option property, which is the option right there that we take in. And we also want an ID property, which is the ID that we take in as a parameter. Now, just to shorten this, because this and this is the same, we can get rid of this and just have one and just have one again. And it kind of implies that that's what we want to do. So now we're passing through an object with an option and an ID property. And the values are going to be these things right here. So we're dispatching that event now, but there's one snag here. We can't just directly access that event in app.svelte because poll details is not nested directly in app.svelte. It's nested inside the poll list over here. So we have to listen to that event right here. So on and then it's the vote event. That's what we call the event over here, I think. Yep, vote. And we don't really want to react to that here by calling a function because we don't want to edit these polls. We want to edit the actual data right here. This is where the data, the source of data is. So we need to then forward it to the parent. Now we've seen how we can do event forwarding with click events and submit events. We can do the same thing with custom events. So I can delete that. And because I don't assign a handler to this, it's now forwarded on to the parent. So now, 
we can go to the parent and we can listen to that event on the poll list right here because it was forwarded. So I'm going to say on vote and now we're going to set that equal to some kind of function and that function will call handle vote. So handle vote like so. So up here, let's create the handle vote function. Const handle vote, set that equal to a function. And inside this function, we take the event object. And remember the data that we send along, which is this object right here with the option and ID property on it, that data is on e.detail. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab that data. I'm going to say const and then I'm going to destructure. So I'm going to get the ID property and also the option property from e.detail. Okay. So now essentially we have two constants, one called ID and one called option. And we can use those now to find which data we need to update in the polls, right? So what we first want to do is create a copy of the polls. Remember, we don't edit it directly. We always have to reassign it. So we're going to create a copy of the polls first of all, update the data that we need to, and then we're going to overwrite this thing right here with the copy of the polls and the updated data. So now let me say let copied polls equal to a new array, and we're just going to spread out the current polls that are in there. So that makes a direct copy of the polls with all of the same objects inside it. Now, the next thing I want to do is find the poll that was upvoted, right? So not necessarily the option yet, but the poll. So if I upvoted one of these, then I'd want to find this poll. If there was another poll and I upvoted that, then I'd want to find this poll. Now we have the ID of the poll that we voted on right here. So we can do that pretty easily. I'm going to say let upvoted poll equal to copied polls dot find. So this is a JavaScript method to find a poll. And this takes a callback function and it fires a callback function for each item in the array or rather this array now right here, which is the same thing essentially. So it's going to fire a callback function for each poll inside that array. And it's going to check if that poll is the one that we want. So if that callback function returns true, then it means that is the poll we want. And then we store that poll in this variable. If the callback function returns false for each item in the array, then it discards that. That's not the one we want. OK, so this callback function right here is going to fire for each item. And we also take in the individual item or poll. You can call this what you want. I've called it poll. Um, it takes in each individual poll in the array. So now we need to check if that poll ID is equal to the ID that we pass into this function right here, this ID that we clicked on. So if these are equal, then it's going to return true, this function. And when it returns true, it says, OK, this is the poll that you wanted to find. Therefore, I'll store that poll inside this variable. So this is now a link to that poll. And all we need to do is then change the data on that poll. We need to either change votes A or votes B, and that is dependent on the option, which is either A or B. So we need to check what that option is right now. So I'm going to say if, not F, if, and I'll say option is triple equal to A. Then what we want to do is we want to take the upvoted poll and then say dot votes A, and we want to add one to that. So just plus plus. And that adds one to that value. And we want to do something similar, but this time for option B. So let's copy that and paste it right here. Change this to B and change this to B. And then we increase that by one. So we copy the polls into a new array. We get a reference to the poll we want to update in that new array. We find out whether it's option A or option B that we need to update. And then we update the votes A or votes B dependent on this, dependent on what they click. OK, so now we have this new array of polls with the upvoted poll data updated, dependent on this check. So now what we can do is just say, OK, well, let the polls now that we have up here, let this value be reassigned and set equal to the copied polls, which have the updated data inside it. And as soon as this reassignment happens, then Svelte is going to rerun. It's going to resend these polls into 
this poll list right here and then that's going to re-render the polls based on that new data and update the DOM. So if I save this and cross my fingers, then it all should work. So let me try this. Python, click, yep, and the votes go up, JavaScript, and the votes go up. And we can see this go up as well, the total votes as we vote. All right, so let's add a new poll just to make sure that this all works. So vote on this. Yep, works. Awesome. Everything works. Cool. So now we've seen how to update these different votes on each poll. I think next we're going to look at the vote bars to show the share of votes that each option has.